hello, this is Lisa Christensen and... Hi, this is Chris Carmichael. And we are so excited to welcome back the riders of Remember the Removal Ride. So, Chris has a beautiful surprise for the riders and here it is. We hope you absolutely love it. And for those of you who do know, it is very rare to receive a jersey that has the rider's signature. Thank you, Chris. From Cherokee Nation Gaming Commission, we have Jamie Humminbird this morning. From our Education uh, Service Department, we have Deputy Director Ron Etheridge. And one of our Cherokee Nation Executive Directors is here this morning, Bruce Davis, Director of Natural Resources. From the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, we have the Director for the Commission of Native American Affairs for State of North Carolina, Greg Richardson. And in the category of other officials, we have former Principal Chief Chad Smith. And we have former Speaker of the House, Larry Adair with us this morning. Well, today is a wonderful day in the Cherokee Nation as we welcome home our group of bike riders from Cherokee Nation and the Eastern Band of Cherokees. They started in New Echota, Georgia, riding through seven states, covering 950 miles, ending today in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. This is a unique challenge for our young people and the two senior riders that joined them as well. You are all an inspiration to me and to our Cherokee people retracing the journey and exposing yourself to our tribal history and heritage is a once in a lifetime opportunity. The Trail of Tears is such a profound part of our story and now it will have so much more meaning for each of you. More meaningful than anything you could read in a book. You got a small taste of what our ancestors experienced many years ago. I'd also like to recognize the Remember the Removal Bike Rider Committee for all their hard work for our participating riders. You know, uh, Joe Bird and I te uh, tease each other about going on the bike ride. Uh, and Sammy Hausberg, who said he was going to turn 71 on the, on the ride itself, I hear all kinds of stories about how well he did done out there. And they had a they had a food, uh, food event at uh, Marietta School yesterday evening, and I was planning on going, but I had a guy come and bale hay for me. And anybody that's worked with square bales knows that you know the round bales can get wet, but you don't want the square bales to get wet. And we may have some rain in a day or two. So my grandson said, "Let's go haul hay, Paul." So I was in the hay field yesterday, and we were in the house cooling off. Uh, and I'd heard that they were coming down Barren Hill from Westville towards Stillwell. And I told my wife and them, and I, I intended to go out by the fence and, you know, hoop and holler and, and wave at them. And uh, we're sitting in there drinking and, and uh, trying to cool off, and I saw them go by the window. You know, this group of people touched two seasons. They left in the spring about a little over three weeks ago. and went to North Carolina, met their counterparts and, and, and all, and then headed back this way, coming back in the summertime. Uh, my youngest grandson said, that doesn't look too hard, Paul, riding them bikes. You know, he said, they're not even pedaling very fast or nothing. I said, son, they've ridden 950 miles and it wasn't all flat like this right here. You know, I said, it's a challenge. But seeing them come back around the corner there and come into the, it, the courthouse uh, lawn here. What a change I can see in, in them as far as they're, they're, you know, they're tanned and, and they're in shape. What a blessing it is to have them come back. And I want to thank you all again for coming out to witness this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Chief. One other introduction we certainly want to make, and that is uh, the First Lady of the Cherokee Nation, Sherry Baker. Waiting on the Eastern Band cyclers when they go back home is a great nation with great leadership. 
and waiting and greeting the Cherokee citizens that came back. It was a great nation with great leadership. And the man whose leadership and vision has brought us so much prosperity and so much support for our young people is our next speaker, and that is the Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, Bill John Baker. Another great day in the Cherokee Nation. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to go to Marietta and welcome the riders to Oklahoma. You know, we, we sat down and we all kind of got in a circle and I started asking some questions. One of those questions is, what was the funniest thing that happened on the trail? The first answer or two was, well, we can't tell that. <laughs> One young man looked and saw his grandparents. He thought, no way. <laughs> then I explained to him that either you tell it the way you want it told, or I guarantee one of these other ones is going to tell it a different way. So they all opened up and they started talking about the funniest things. Now Sammy talked about explaining to him what happens in a hammock when you're sleeping and somebody cuts the rope. <laughs> there were some hammocks. He did not cut the rope but they, slept, they didn't sleep that night. They sat there all night long expecting him to cut the rope. I don't know if Sammy took our riders under his wing or if our riders took Sammy under their wing. A common thread through it was we know this is a leadership program. We know that we learned tremendous things about our past. But we discovered something inside us that is important for our future. But they also said that they don't think we need to have an age limit. They think if a Sammy Hausberg can come, they want him there for his knowledge, his experience, and to help them. We had him from 14 years to 71 years. And in my mind, they are all elders today. I also asked them what was the most emotional part of this ride. And pretty soon one of them says what made it real for me. And that ran through, instead of emotional, it was what made it real. They could feel their ancestors on the trail. The noises that the bikes made were the similar noises to what the wagons or the horses or our ancestors walking that very trail would have sounded like and they were exhausted just like our ancestors were. So I think it opened them up 
to absorb more. Then I ask them, what would you tell your friends, your neighbors, your cousins about doing the same thing? And to a person, they're in. They think it is maybe the greatest thing that they have ever done or been a part of. And that's quite a bit when Sammy's been three tours of duty in Vietnam. This is a great program. I'm tickled that the Cherokee Nation started it so many years ago. I'm tickled that the council is in full support. It's not cheap, folks. They furnish all the gas, but the bikes are expensive. The folks we send, but it's an investment in our tribe. It's an investment in our youth and our elders. I couldn't be more pleased. You, you'll hear from some of them. Oh, and I visited with some parents and grandparents, and they missed you. They're ready for you to be home to have you share your experiences. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless the Cherokee Nation. Thank you, Chief. At this time, I would like to ask up Marissa Cabe and Tosh Welch with the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians to say a few words. Good afternoon. Let me tell you about the state of Missouri. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Misery. Misery. State of misery. So, thank you for trimming your heels now. Let me first begin by thanking the leaders of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians, specifically Principal Chief Bill John Baker and Deputy Chief Crittenden, as well as the EBCI Principal Chief Patrick Lambert and Vice Chief Richie Sneed, who rode with us for a week through Tennessee. In addition, I would like to also thank all of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, every one of you, for making me and my teammates from Cherokee feel so welcomed. The level of support for this endeavor has truly been amazing. As we rode in from Westville, we saw Cherokee people, brown faces, honking their horns, waving and cheering. And when we finally arrived at Marietta School, we felt like we were being welcomed home, even though we were more than 900 miles from the Kuala Boundary and the mountains we miss so dearly. The welcome was genuine in the fact that Cherokee people went out of their way to make other Cherokees that they had never met feel welcomed. We were fed, we were accommodated, and we were well taken care of. And for that, we from Cherokee all want to thank you. This journey was special for each and every person on this stage be it for personal growth, spiritual reconnection, or the opportunity to reconnect with our ancestors, our culture, and our identity. Every person here is a better person. We have new perspective. We have a new understanding of one another and a new understanding of ourselves. In closing, please know this. Our ride was a journey. It was our Ithaca. We are all richer for having endured it. So thank you, Cherokee Nation, for loading us your loved ones. They are all home now and safe. And thank you for taking care of us so that we may return home to our loved ones. And let us endeavor to continue to care for one another as friends and family and as one people. We are Cherokee Skink. very unprepared. His is written out. You see mine. Various hotels, various pens. I'm a list maker. What does that make me personality wise? C, D. You guys know from the writers group, some of the leadership training we had, we figured out what uh, 
style personalities we had, and I'm evidently a list maker. So I want to add a couple more thank yous. One is to the Cherokee Choices, uh, Sheena, Connaught Lambert, and Tara McCoy, for without them on the Eastern Band side, this event would not happen from our point of view. We have had various people come in and take care of us. Um, just real quickly, Matt, Jake, Kevin Jackson, who's here, Joey, Sarah, Leanne, Marvel, and Joanna, Yona, Reba, Colton, Josh, Ron, and Brenda Etheridge, Dr. Gloria Sly, Travis, Bob, Vince, Mark, and if I've forgotten anyone, I apologize for that, but we truly do appreciate everyone that has been there to help take care of us. We all had various reasons for taking this journey. Um, some of it was for physical, just to see if we could do it physically. I turned 50 years old this year. Uh, one advantage is I was the third oldest person on the ride, so I was the third person in line to get to eat every time we went somewhere. So <laughs> being older does have some advantages. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this ride was to work on forgiveness. Um, I think that our history and the trauma, all the atrocities that were committed against us as a people, uh, if we don't let go of that, we're hurting ourselves. We're not hurting anyone else. We didn't have a vote on taking that journey. We didn't have a choice on walking, riding, however, to get from where we were in the eastern part of the state to this area now. We did have a choice on what we left on that ride as far as our spirit. And I can tell you, our spirit lives on today. And everyone that is here, every one of these riders up here, and all of the Native American people everywhere, our spirit survives no matter what they've done to us. Tom Hill said it best, I think, when he said when we were walking the trail, because the emotions were many. We've cried, we've laughed a lot, we've laughed a lot, and we've had to, to keep from crying a lot of times. We have felt anger, we have felt pain. Tom said it best when he said that we could focus on those feelings of anger or pain, but he chose not to, we chose not to. We chose to focus on the strength that we have as a people. We chose to focus that we are one nation. No matter what the federal government says, we are Cherokee, we are Zalagee. We're not Eastern Band, we are not Cherokee Nation, we are Cherokee people. With that, I think Tosh and I have a couple of gifts to give. Thank you, uh, Marissa and Tosh. At this time, I would like to introduce a remember, a remember the removal alumni who was instrumental in helping train the riders this year, and that is Miss Sarah Holcomb. Sarah. It's going to be hard following those two. Um, CO, my name is Sarah Holcomb. And I've had the opportunity to um, be involved in this ride this year a lot more than I have in the past years. And um, it's, uh, I was became a support staff this year. Usually I get to ride, and it's a totally different dynamic sitting there watching them ride all day. And um, it was really a privilege to sit there and uh, support them all. Um, as a group, we would like to express our deepest and sincerest appreciation and gratitude to the Cherokee Nation Administration and Eastern Band Administration um, Tribal Council for supporting this because it's a life-changing leadership program. 
As a former RTR cyclist, I know exactly what it's like to prepare your body, mind, and soul for this. And it's, you think you're ready, but once you get on the road, it's, it's totally different. And uh, this group is amazing. I've never seen a group come pull together as much as this they have. And um, I'm so proud of them. Um, I'm trying not to get emotional. They're, they're an amazing group of people. Um, you'll be hearing a lot about them in the future. Again, thank you all, family and friends, for your interest and support from this program. And always, never forget. Thank you, Sarah. At this time, I would like to invite Chief Baker, Deputy Chief Crittenden, and Miss Cherokee Jaleesi Pittman up to the podium to present the riders with medals and certificates. Ceremony is going to be fairly short. They gave me three bottles of water to make sure. All right, I will read the names and ask the riders to come forward. First, Amber Anderson. J.D. Arch. Tyler Trumbla. Marissa Cabe. Jack Cooper. Misha Craig. <laughs> Kelsey Gertie.
Chief says in the olden days we'd do this and we couldn't afford shade. So <laughs> thank you, Chief. Um, Stephanie Hammer. Tom Hill. Aaron Hogner. Sammy Hausberg. Would Sammy's groupies pl please wave your hands? Kevin Jackson. Nikki Lewis. <laughs> Stacy Leeds. Cole Sanuk. Lyndon Van Zandt. Josh Welch.
Friday. I'm gonna make you famous. All right. <laughs> And finally, Blaine Workman. I would like to ask Kevin Jackson and Sarah Holcomb to come to the podium. On behalf of the group, we want to present this uh, gift to Chief uh, for always supporting this program, and uh, we really appreciate it. And Deputy, we also appreciate you. to invite the Cherokee National Youth Choir to come to the stage and sing for us. They're going to sit out there and sing for us.
time I would like to recognize an indispensable part of this program and, and let's uh, have them stand or raise their hand, the staff of the Remember the Removal Ride. and an enduring part of this program and those riders that came before what we call the legacy riders of the remember the removal ride please stand and raise your hand if you can i'd now like to call up a gentleman who is a member of the council of the cherokee nation representing district three and he is the chair of the education committee and he is a great friend of this program and that's councilman david walking stick so yeah, it's a beautiful day i'm honored to be here before you guys uh 1980 uh dr mike morse started this program and he done it under the influence to uplift the spirits of our youth and to educate our youth about where we come from. The investment that we put into this financially brings vested tribal members. These young people back behind me and you guys that went on this trail the removal you guys bring purpose. You guys know more about our history than a lot of our tribal members do. And having that purpose brings back a huge impact to our tribe because it's not just a job when you're working for the tribe, but it's a calling. You know, looking over the history of, of this removal and reading about it in the 4,000 Cherokees that that passed away on it. It was it was like it was a political deal. There was gold in northern Georgia. There was uh, the the white neighboring uh, folks that was next to the Cherokees wanted to take over the land, and that forced the Indian Removal Act. None of us was there, but if we could just picture it, of saying that's not right today if that was going on we said that's just not right but we didn't have a choice but the tragedy of the trail of tears didn't end back in the 1800s it's got a beautiful ending on the story and it's present day it's where we are today we have hospitals we have school we're educating our cherokees we have sovereignty we persevered, and I'm glad that as a tribe we was able to let go and let God. God has truly blessed the Cherokee Nation. If you guys would uh, bow with me, and uh, let's go to our Creator in prayer. Uh, there, ain't Father, we just God, we thank you for this beautiful day. God, we we count these blessings. And you've taken us so far that we don't even deserve. And Father, just thank you for your grace and mercy, God, when we fall short. God, thank you for protecting these riders, Lord, as they went 900 miles across the country. As they, as they brought influence and uplifted spirits across the United States as they made this made their way, Lord. God, just thank you for protecting them, Lord. God, thank you for piercing their hearts. And God in identifying them of being a creation of you and being Cherokee. God, we thank you for those veterans, Lord, that that protect our country, that give us the freedom, Lord, just to, to worship you. God, we, we're so thankful for that. And God, just continue to put your hand over the Cherokee Nation, Lord. Just continue to bless us and let us persevere, Lord, of, of all these things. God, we are so thankful that we are Cherokee. And God, just be with us as we go on this beautiful day. And God, let us never forget your cross and what you've done for us and your sacrifice. It's in all these things we ask. In your name we pray. Amen.
No. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, this concludes our program. Thank you for joining us. What else?